Here I got a matching card game that I coded using JavaScript. And we can see, try to remember, play a fun match game, try to beat the timer and get them in there. All right, let's do this. And it also just refreshes and it randomizes and changes the icons. Okay. So, this, I have all the starter files in the description of my video. And you can download those and start with this and then drag it into Visual Studio Code. <coughs> and you'll see you already have the HTML and CSS and the images there. And all you'll need to do is we're just going to work on the JavaScript on this one. So go ahead and make a new file, script.js, enter, and I'll zoom in so it's nice and clear for you. Okay. So step one, in creating a program, we want to create, we want to store our variables. So we're going to go variables. We want to store the variables. We want to create variables to store the data that we're wanting to control, keep track of. Variables. All right, first we got const our cards. What are, what are our cards going to be? We're going to go document. Dot query selector all and it is the class card. Go ahead and put a comma. And a tab right here. Because that's gonna be time tag. Time tag equal document. This one just query selector, not all. And time B. There you go. And now flip tag query selector. Good job. Make sure you're putting the commas and then re fresh but button. All right, and then we're ending that one right there. That's the const. These are the things that are going to stay the exact same, and they are targeting the classes in our HTML. You can look at the HTML to see card, time, B, flip B, details, and button. <clears throat> All right, now here are the variables that we'll be able to change. But we got, we need we want to keep track of our max time and we can change it if we wish but for right now we're just going to do 20 seconds and then let we'll go keep track of the time we have left and that will be max time and then we got let flips 
start that off at zero, but it'll increment up every time we flip a card. This will keep track of the cards we match. Save deck. False. We got to know if we're playing or not. It's playing. To start off with. And then we want to let card one. Card two and timer. Awesome. All right, so right there, now we have all of our variables. Perfect. Make sure you got that incorrect. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a function to init. Initialize the timer to start the timer. To start the timer. The way we're going to start that off is <coughs> function. You can hit that. And we're going to call this function. Nish timer. Uh, for this, we have no parameters, and we'll have some selection here though. If time left is lesser than or equal to zero, then we're going to return. Clear interval timer. Good. And we're also going to call time left. Time tag. And what we want to add to our inner HTML inner text is time left. Good. Sweet. So you're still though right here we're still not going to see anything but this is getting the timer going. We have one more step before we can start seeing progress. Currently, right now, let me hit a go live for us. Currently, right now, it's that, and it doesn't do anything. But we need to create one more function. And now this function is to handle the card flipping. All right, so this function is going to allow us to flip the cards. So let's do <coughs> function. And I'm going to call this flip card. And our parameter will be a little different. Remember to put the curly braces. Target. Clicked. Card. Good. All right. So now we're going to put some selection. 
is. Here's the not operator. If not is playing, so if we're not playing, then is playing equals true. And then we want our timer to equal set interval int timer is right here. One second. All right. And let's do another condition. If <coughs> clicked card does not equal card one and does not disable deck and time left is less is greater than zero. What we want to do then is flips plus plus Flip tag dot inner text equals flips. All right. Clicked card dot class. List, make sure that L is capital. Dot add flip. Good job. And inside, we're going to nest. This is nesting a conditional. If card one return card one equals clicked, oh, not capital, clicked card. Card two equals clicked card. Disable deck. True. We're going to hit a let. This is getting the image on the back of the card. Let's see if it's matching.
All right, perfect. Comma. We're going to do the same thing. But with card two. Sweet. Okay. So now what we should be seeing is the ability for the cards to flip. First, what we need to do is call this. Call this flip card function. And the way we're going to do that is cards. We're going to put that in a loop. adding a, a, an event listener inside of this loop. Good. All right. Okay, and now we should be able to flip the card. Make sure to save that. Okay, and I'll flip. So let's check for an error right here in my event listener. Not clicked, we're checking for click. All right, fix that, save. And now let's check. All right, so now we should be able to flip two cards and our timer is moving. Perfect. Now we're ready for the next step. Since now we're able to flip two cards, awesome. Now we want to be able to flip multiple cards. Okay. So what we're going to do, flip multiple cards and match them. So on top of us calling flip card, let's do the next step. And that is creating another function. And this function is to check if two flipped cards match. All right, so we're going to start with function. And we'll call this, remember, always name your functions based off of what its functionality is match cards and for this function we are going to have two parameters img1 and we're going to look for img2 all right now we're going to go if img1 equals 1 2 3 img2 all right, and what that's going to do is add match card. Good. And this is nesting a conditional right here. And the nested conditional here is going to be matched. We're going to look for a matched card if it equals six and there is time left time left is greater than zero then we're going to return clear interval timer like a new timer. Really it shows if you want to add like a you have one message 
and you can add this here as well. Oh, see this red marker? It needs to be a semicolon. Okay, and under this we're also going to send card one dot remove event listener quotations click and flip card okay and we're going to do the same but for card two we can copy that. Awesome. And then let's go card one equals card two, semicolon. Disable deck is what we can put to false. All right, good. And now what we also want to do in this match card function is set the timer, set timeout, And in case they don't match, we're going to make a little shake. We're going to make it shake. Same thing for card two. Both of them are going to shake. And this we styled in our CSS. You can look for shake to see how we styled that. Put a comma here, 400, it's like 0.4 seconds. Okay, and then one more. We can go ahead and copy this. Oh, right here, good, good, I saw this. Not card shake, this is card two. Glad I saw that now. So we can um, copy these two again, put them down here. in the situation that they do match. Awesome. And then we're going to make it 1.2 seconds. Good. All right, boom. Now we finished our match cards functions. So in order for this function to start, we need to call it. And we're going to actually call it here in our flip card function. So under this, 
we're going to call match cards here. Match cards. Card one. IMG. And card two. IMG. Good. All right, now let's check it out. We should be able to flip multiple cards to find the match. Boom, boom. And it shakes when it's incorrect. Very good. Shakes when it's incorrect. That one flips back. Good. And we're able to flip. But as we can see, even if I refresh it, my cards are now not randomizing. So now I have to add the random, like randomizing where the cards refresh to. That'll be the next step. Step, last step. If you noticed, uh, let me refresh this. Here, here, and then it only flips this one back. Watch, here, here, only flips this one back. What I noticed in my code, you see, how I added remove here I didn't I this is add that's why it's the second one is still staying so I need to put remove here save that and then it'll flip back boom and they flip back perfect and they flip back okay but like we said we're not finding uh, any matched well let's see if they're matched can I find a match in time? No. It's okay. Um, let me see. Boom, boom. What's not? What's happening is they're not randomizing. So you see if I refresh, that's still the green one, and that's still that one. Refresh. Green one, that one. That's a pretty boring game once you memorize it all. So we need the shuffle up the cards function. So one last function this is the last step to finalize the game. This function is to shuffle cards and reset the game. All right, so we're going to go function Shuffle cards. Uh, this one has no parameters. We're going to call time left. It's going to equal max time because we want the game to reset, giving us our max time. Flips is going to equal match card equals zero. Sorry, matched. If you notice that if the little white thing's there, that means you spelled one of your variables indirectly. Card one equals card two. It's not capital. Slow down. And in quotations. And then we're going to clear interval timer. We do want our time tag. Inner text. This is what we're going to have displaying on the page is going to be the time left. Our flips tag, inner HTML, no, inner text equal flips. Again, disable deck, and it's going to be is playing to be false. 
Okay, so now here's when we're going to need to add our array to manage the shuffling of the deck. And so this array will look like this. Okay, and now we're going to sort them, sort this array by doing a math calculation. Perfect. All right, all right. Uh, and now we need to add a loop for the cards. Great, we're almost there. We're going to add an image tag. It's going to be card, query selector. This is just getting the correct picture at random for shuffling up the cards. This member is a back tick, not a single quotation. Back tick is the button left to the number one. This means absolute value. So we're calling the array array. This is how your array is being processed inside of your program. This time, remember to press type click, not click like I did last time. Click. Uh, 
Okay, looks good. Put a semicolon right here. And we have one more thing. So now this is a shuffle card. We can go ahead and copy this because we need to call this down here. Calling our shuffle card function. And we need to add one more event listener. Refresh button. And we're going to call shuffle card again. And that should be it. Down here, we should have a semicolon. But yeah, that should be it. Our game should be working perfect now. Is the purple? Nope, it's wrong. Let me do the purple again. Let's find that purple. We'll get a red. Good. And now, when it's matching, it's staying. Awesome. Can I beat this game? Oh my goodness, I can do this. Almost there. Four seconds. Oi. Oi. Oh, so close. But good. There you have it. I can press refresh button and it refreshes and I can start back over with a new shuffle. All right. Enjoy.